Hello, and welcome to Unity Church on the Mountain from my home. The title of the talk today is Night Vision, Chasing Dragons. But before we start the talk, let's begin by affirming together our opening statement. There is only one presence and one power in my life and the universe, God. And I invite you now to take a deep breath with me, just gently breathing in and filling your lungs and releasing, releasing and relaxing, allowing your body to just be very comfortable and very relaxed. And let us affirm together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Leave us not in temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So what about that title, Night Vision, and then with the subtitle, Chasing Our Dragons? To begin this illustration, let's start with a joke. There was a burglar who broke into a house. And as he was in the house, it was dark. So he started shining his flashlight around the house, looking for the valuables. And out of the darkness, he heard a voice. And the voice said, Jesus is watching you. And on hearing this voice, he froze, turned off his flashlight, and just stood there listening. He didn't hear anything else. No movement. Didn't feel like anybody else was in the room with him. So he turned the flashlight back on and, and started his search again. And about the time he began to unplug the wires from the stereo, he heard the voice again. Jesus is watching you. And so very quickly he swung around with his flashlight and shined it in the direction that he thought he heard the voice. And there in a birdcage was a parrot. And the burglar said, did you say that? And the parrot answered him and said, I was just trying to warn you. And the burglar said, well, trying to warn me, what's your name? He says, my name is Moses. And the burglar said, what kind of owners would, would call their parrot Moses? And the parrot answered the burglar and said, the same kind of owners that would call their Rottweiler Jesus. So what is this idea of shining a flashlight in a dark room. Night vision. Shining a flashlight around in a dark room. Chasing the dragons. You see, when the flashlight is shined around the dark room, you only see the places that are being illuminated by the light. The, the entire room is dark except for the places where the light shines. This is an analogy for our, our consciousness. In our vast mental space, and I, when I say that mental space, I want to include heart space and body space because all of these are part of our collected mind or consciousness. 
So as we shine the flashlight in the dark room, it's like our awareness. We're only aware of the places in our consciousness where the light is shining. So let's hold that in mind in this analogy and think about the light flashlight shining in the dark room or if you've ever been in a cave that when you turn the light on in the total darkness and you see only the places where the light is shining. And I want to start reading for you from the Lamsa translation from the ancient uh, Eastern texts. In the Gospel of John, chapter 1, I'm going to read verses 1 through 5. Some call it the prologue. You may be very familiar with it. But open yourself right now to spirit within and hear it with fresh ears. The Word was in the beginning, and that very Word was with God. And God was that Word. The same was in the beginning with God. Everything came to be by his hand, and without him not even one thing that was created came to be. The life was in him, and the life was the light of men. And the same light shines in darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. And the same light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. And now going over to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, I'd like to read verse 22 and 23. The eye is the lamp of the body. If, therefore, your eye be bright, your whole body is also lighted. But if your eye is diseased, your whole body will be dark. If, therefore, the light that is in you is darkness, how much greater will be your darkness? Now, in Western culture, when we hear light and dark, our mind wants to go to the idea of this, these contrasting pairs, good and evil, with good being light and darkness being evil, but that, let that just be out of your mind for right now. Because God did say, you know, it was, it was evening and it was, it was day, and it was all good. So there's nothing inherently evil about the darkness, nothing inherently good about the light. It just is. So <clears throat> let's, let's hold that in our, in our open mind and look closer at this verse. The eye is the lamp of our body, kind of like the flashlight. If your lamp is bright, and other, other translations say healthy, some say single, then your whole body is lighted. So think about what it might be if that lamp is, is healthy or bright. When we see from a healthy eye, when we see, that's the same as our perception. Because what we see is what we actually bring into our consciousness. So if we perceive the world in a healthy way, seeing the good that's there, instead of looking for the bad, instead of looking for with a judging eye and seeing what might be harmful or unhealthy, So when we're seeing from this healthy point of view, our whole body is lighted. But if your eye is diseased, if you're seeing from an, an aspect of error thought, then your whole body will be dark. And therefore the light that is in you is darkness. And how much greater will, you, will be your darkness? Now that we're in unity, and we have these tools to help us to see with a healthy eye, 
we can pretty much be we can pretty much be aware of what's going on in our consciousness and make a shift so that we're seeing that with a healthy eye. But I want to, you to think back now to when you were a child. We didn't have all these spiritual tools. And if something happened that was painful to us, what did we do? We made a reaction. Somehow we, we changed our thoughts so that we wouldn't feel this pain or these uncomfortable sensations. Sensations like, nobody loves me. Sensations like, I am not worthy. Sensations like, I have to please these, these people who are caring for me so that I can continue to be cared for. And so we cover up thoughts that might be going on that might actually be healthy but somehow we're reprimanded for whatever reason. And I know I'm speaking in general because there's so many possible examples. And so we cover these up and we relegate them to the darkness. We don't shine our light on them anymore. The flashlight does not shine over there. And so we're seeing the formation of the shadow. The place where we don't shine our flashlight of consciousness. The corners of the room. The places that we don't use in our consciousness. And we don't use them on purpose, even if we've forgotten what that purpose is. Now that brings me to the next scripture. Remember the first one that I read in John. Because there's that, that verse at the end. So let's go over to John and, and read one more time. So I'm going to start at the beginning again. And read it one more time. Because it's, it's important for us to see the perspective. The perspective of this oneness. Because it shows us our relationship. To the whole. The word, and what is a word? Okay. The Greek that's translated as word is logos. Logos. Some people translate it as reason, but it's little more than that. The Aramaic word is milta, a feminine word. Interesting. But think about in English, just the idea of a word. A word is a vibration. We hear it because there's this vibration. And the vibration is organized. It's got, it's got certain things, characteristics about this vibration that allow us to put a meaning to the vibration. So it's, it's not only an energy, this vibration, but it's also information. So you have energy and information in this word. So the word, this, this energy and information was in the beginning. And that very word was with God. And God was that word, this vibration and information from the very beginning. It is. A God not only was that word, God is that word. In Aramaic, there is, there is, the, the verbs are, are all tense, not just past. They're, they're combined in one. So that our Western mind wants to say that creation happened, but in the Eastern mind, not only did it happen, it, it, it it's, it's happening right now, and it's, it's happening in the future. It will happen. And all of that is combined in one. It makes me think of eternity. The same was in the beginning with God. Everything came to be by its hand, by the hand of this word, this vibration. 
and it is coming into being, and it will come into being. Let's remember that. This isn't something that happened and is done with. And without it, not even one thing that was created came to be. Everything is coming to be by this vibration with information. The life was in it. All life was in it. And the life was the light of us, of all humankind. Mm. All right, so now we're getting an idea of what this light is like. And this same light shines in the darkness. The same light shines in the darkness. And the darkness does not overcome it. And this is the answer to those dragons that we put into the corners of the room that we don't shine our light on because we don't want to see those dragons. If we don't see the Rottweiler, whose name happens to be Jesus, then we won't feel like we're about to be attacked. So we don't shine our light over there. But all we've got to do to overcome the darkness is to shine the light. Because it says right here, the darkness does not overcome this light. Some of you know I've started what's called a practicum for this part of my ministry. And I'm interning at the Spot Clinic which is a place that helps children. And I thought it was only going to be about speech, but it's about so much more because they have occupational therapy, physical therapy, and speech therapy. And it's all going on. And, and, it's, and from what I saw, it was children. And these children would come in and they would be in shock for whatever reason. It seemed like they all came in and there was this moment when they first came into the room that there was fear or for whatever it was. And we don't know what's going on in their consciousness. But the symptoms were they were they were clammed together. They were they weren't even seeing what was going on around them. They were in this shell. Or they were they were in tears. Just screaming in tears. And the first thing that these wonderful workers in this place did is to make them feel comfortable. So they went into this space that's, that felt safe, that felt bright, it had colors in it. They didn't go right into trying to teach and to get this child to do something that the child wasn't even hearing. No, the first thing they did was get this child to open up. Perhaps the child began to shine the flashlight into some areas that were uncomfortable. And that's what the, the teaching does. See, after they were made comfortable, this light was turned on in them. And they began to see with this, with this bright light, with this healthy light. Then the teachers, and, I, and, and teachers isn't the right word, but it really works here, we're able to begin exercises that would help the child to shine the light into the more cornered areas of their consciousness. Different ones had different things they were working on. But as the light shined, you could really see, first of all, the comforter at work, making them see the, just the world right now in this moment with a healthy eye. And they began to smile. And then they were addressing things that were uncomfortable for them. That, that's what's in the chart for this, for this child. There are certain exercises that they go through that, that begin to dip their toe in the water, so to speak, so that they're experiencing these things about their consciousness that give them triggers, that trigger them to go back into this clammed up, closed up nature, or to lash out. And so we have this dipping the toe in the water to gently shine the light into these corner, dark areas of their consciousness. 
And we as humans, as, as human adults who've been through this as a child, and maybe we didn't have such a comforter to help us to address these things, we just cowboyed up and we just went on. And so there's a lot of this stuff that's unaddressed in us. We don't shine our light in those corners because they're not helping us to be, to do those things in our life that we need to get done in order to live. And so they just sit there. And sometimes they'll jump out as these dragons come out of the corner and they cause us to do things that aren't who we think we are. Say things that we wouldn't normally say. And so we can't be our fully human self until we can shine the light in the darkness because the light automatically overcomes it. But until it's addressed and accepted as being there, because it's all good, it's just our child mind that was in us went to this place to protect ourselves and pushed all of these feelings and all of these thoughts into the corner. So we'll shine the light, the lamp of the comforter, spirit. Spirit is the comforter and our teacher, and it's right here with us. And that teacher at the clinic is all they're doing is getting these children to address this darkness that's in them, these, these darker places, with their own comforter. You see, and, and that's our responsibility for ourselves to bring that comforter that's in us, the light that's already there, and just illuminate the darkness like shining the flashlight in the room. So we all have these things, but they can be overcome, and we have within us all we need to do it. I want to talk about the welcoming practice and following the line, but I'm afraid that we'll have to wait for another time. Maybe we'll have a workshop, and I invite you to come out to that. We do have Sunday services at the church every Sunday, and you're always invited. I would love to, to meet you and see you there in person. Um, so let's remember the flashlight and let's remember to shine that light into the dark corners. When we start seeing one of these dragons coming out at us and we notice changes in our body that are, that are coming about because this dragon, there's always going to be changes in the body that will signal that this dragon is coming out. And then if we shine the light on it and allow the dragon that's already in our consciousness to just accept that it is there. Then we're shining the light on it and, and the darkness has, has no other choice but to be overcome by the light. That's, that's what we saw in John 1. So this is the exercise. Just be aware of the dragons. And instead of running from them or pushing them away back into the cave, just allow the light to shine on them, accepting them for what they are and noticing then how their power becomes less. <clears throat> Excuse me. That dragon is really not such a terrible beast. That dragon becomes tamed and perhaps even useful to us as it no longer has control over us. I thank you for your attention and I invite you to pursue this into your life. Let's close by affirming together our opening, our, I'm sorry, our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. I am the light. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love. The power of God protects us. I am the power. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence. Wherever I am, God is, and all is well. Thank you. If you feel moved 
to freely give, to support the ministry that brings truth into our community and into this world. I invite you to go to on the web to unitychurchonthemountain.org. Scroll down to the bottom left and there's a yellow button that says donate. Just click on that button and give, but only if you can freely give. There is no obligation here. Thank you so much.